I have here two somewhat dated display devices, an ancient TV and an even older DLP projector. And you'd be assuming correctly if you thought that neither of them can hold a candle to modern displays. Technology's moved on and they simply look dim and washed out in comparison. However, there is a fascinating modification that we can make to them that enables performance that matches and in some cases surpasses that of many modern TVs, but for a fraction of the cost. And what's more, it's a trick that could have been done decades ago but never was for reasons that I just cannot fathom. You see, one of the factors that make old TVs look so bad to a modern eye is their inability to show deep contrast. This is because they generate images by blocking out light from an always lit backlight. Unfortunately, it's just impossible for the LCD layer that performs this function to block out all of the light when attempting to reproduce dark tones. So some of the light just ends up leaking through, washing out the image. Many modern TVs hide this problem by dividing their backlighting layers into a grid and then selectively dimming dark areas so that the LCD panel doesn't have to battle against so much light. While this does work well for the most part, the grid resolution is usually so low that it causes large blooming around objects and you can even sometimes see the individual zones being turned on and off during motion, causing a sort of permanent hazy ghosting effect. I have a TV that uses this technology and I don't like it at all. In fact, it was while I was here on this very sofa watching a movie observing these issues that I thought, can't I make my own dimmable backlight that's high enough of a resolution to fix these problems? Think about it, the more backlighting grid zones we have, the tighter the backlight will follow the rims of objects, to the point where it should eliminate blooming entirely and potentially even create images that are comparable to extremely high-end OLED displays. It's a great idea, but making a high resolution backlighting grid at home and for cheap would be a horrendous task that would make this project pretty much inaccessible for all but the most dedicated hobbyists. However, this is where the old projector comes to the rescue. Now, on its own, it's not really a device I'd like to watch a movie on. Projectors, particularly office projectors like this, rarely look very good unless they're in a light-controlled environment. But what is interesting is its render resolution. 1024 by 768 might not sound like much in the 4K era, but it's still over 700,000 pixels. That's an order of magnitude more than an LED dimming zone TV, which often have a backlight resolution of less than 68 by 38. Now, imagine for a moment that the projector were pointed at the back of an LCD panel. It would, in theory, provide a high resolution luminance map that could result in crazy good image quality, with each pixel acting as a dimming zone. So, to see if this idea has a chance of working, we'll need a sacrificial TV. And the one I have here was actually rescued from going to the tip because it has a broken backlight. So, it's completely unusable as is, and therefore is a perfect opportunity to do some upcycling. So, to get at the LCD panel inside, we'll just place it on its front, as the plan is to extract all of the internal components and install them into a custom frame that features a completely open back, so that we can project light directly onto the rear of the LCD panel. There are surprisingly few components inside here, just a couple of PCBs and the speakers, all of which need to be carefully removed so we can use them later. The PCB with the coils and large capacitors is the power supply, and as the capacitors can store a nasty charge in them even after being unplugged from the mains for a while, it's very important to avoid touching them to protect against any electric shock. The signal processing boards, however, usually run off a low DC voltage generated by the power supply, so not as much caution is required when detaching them. With that done, the perimeter frame that holds the LCD panel in place can now be removed. But before taking the panel itself out, its extremely delicate ribbon boards have to be released, allowing the entire backlight assembly to be lifted away. This leaves us with the LCD panel itself, raw and ready to use for our project. 
Now, it is incredibly delicate, so our next focus will be on making a custom stand for it to keep it upright. And the best thing to do for this is immediately return it to its perimeter frame. You can see just how bendy it is here, and because it's made of glass, there is a real risk of shattering it. To support it in the middle during this process would have been a good idea, but regardless, it is now safely within its frame once again. This restores enough rigidity to make it easier to handle, so it can be safely put to one side for now, as we need to take a look at the backlight assembly that we just lifted off. While some very old TVs use fluorescent tubes, mine is new enough to use lensed LEDs. Despite being arranged in a grid, these were never capable of being individually dimmed, so I was able to power up one of the rows that still worked by merely providing it with a voltage, as it's a good demo of how the diffusion layers work. There are quite a few layers that perform this function, but the only one we need is the thickest diffusion sheet. It provides heavy diffusion from any light source, which will ensure that the projector illuminates the LCD panel uniformly when it's placed on the back. Anyway, with it now glued in place, we now need to start considering how we're going to keep this vertically upright. And my plan is to use some extruded aluminium lengths to act as legs. CT1 type glue sticks very well to aluminium, so this is a simple way of supporting the structure. As you can see, I've added some plastic trim to the bottom as well, and the reason for this is to allow the ribbon PCBs to rest upon it, as they need to be completely out of the way of the diffusion sheet so that they don't block any projected light. To make a base to keep it upright, we'll again keep things simple and just use a sheet of MDF, giving it a lick of paint to make it look a little neater. The idea is for the aluminium legs to fit on either side of this, being held in place by some plastic brackets. These brackets effectively act as front feet, which means we can use the whole area underneath to mount the electronics we removed earlier, like the speakers and PCBs. To keep these together, I sandwiched mine between two sheets of aluminium, using plastic to surround the power supply to keep it safely away from fingers. The intention with this sandwich is to glue it to the bottom of the base to act as a rear foot, and as you can see, the final structure looks actually kind of cool. With the back of the panel now entirely open, we can shine any light upon the rear diffusion sheet to see images from the TV for the first time, and it's honestly quite surprising how bright it is. So, with the TV now operable with a completely open back, it's time to try it out using a projector as the backlight. But before we see what kind of impact this has on image quality, it's time for a quick ad from Odoo. If you're involved with business at any scale, you'll know just how difficult it can be to juggle the different types of software that are required to keep everything running smoothly. Whether that's tracking job hours, submitting invoices, managing your accounting, or website creation, the list is endless. With Odoo, though, you can significantly improve your business workflow by utilizing a wide range of applications to simplify these day-to-day -day tasks. Want to start e-commerce? With Odoo, the process is simple using their configurator. First, define the type of site, the industry, and your goals. Then choose a color palette or upload a logo, add pages and features, and then select a theme from the wide range available. Odoo will then use AI to automatically build the structure of your website based on your input parameters, where you can then customize it with an intuitive drag and drop system. You can easily add a product, you just need to add a name, define the price, upload an image, and you can then add a description and adjust the layout by using content blocks. The best bit is that Odoo allows you to launch your e-commerce for free with their lifetime free first app offer, which includes unlimited hosting and support. You even get a free personalized domain name for a year as well. To take advantage of this offer and see what other ways you can use Odoo to simplify your business workflow, visit my link in the description. So, just how well does a projector work as a highly localized backlighting system for our LCD panel? 
Well, keeping with the low-cost upcycling theme, my projector is one of those old types that uses a bulb as the backlight, so they're not very sought after these days, and therefore they can be had for very cheap prices, or even free if you can get one from an office clear-out. Now, the first test we're going to do with it is have it project a completely white slate image to emulate a standard plain TV backlighting system so we can evaluate the maximum possible brightness with it, what with it having to pass through the LCD layer. And honestly, it's pretty dim. I think it goes without saying that this would be a pretty poor TV watching experience, even if it did have perfect blacks. However, there is actually loads of wasted light here because colour filtering is being performed not only on the TV, but on the projector itself. And there's a simple modification that we can do that still gives me hope. You see, the projector's bulb is a wide spectrum white light. So in order for the projector to display colour at all, it's been designed so that the light shines through a rotating colour wheel. To generate red, for example, the projector lets light through only while the red portion of the wheel is in front of the light path, where the projector's tiny mirror-based DLP chip then dithers the luminance to mix it where required, before the wheel rapidly moves on to the next colour. It all happens so fast that our eyes merge everything together to make a coherent image. This colour creation method, though, means that through most of the wheel's rotation, light is being blocked, which is pointless for our use case as we don't need these different colours. We just want the white light straight from the bulb for our luminance map. Thankfully, removing this colour wheel from the light path is pretty easy, although annoyingly it does need to remain connected for the projector to still turn on. Sticking it to the outside of the case is admittedly a little bit janky, but it should be fine while we just test things out. Without the colour wheel, it is obviously now only black and white, but my goodness, it's so much brighter now that it throws enough white light onto the back of the LCD panel to make its images clearly visible, even in a well-lit room. Definitely a mod worth making. So, with our projector now made a bit more suitable for backlighting use, it's time to see what it looks like projecting an actual image onto the back of our LCD panel. This is obviously a step beyond projecting just a white slate, as we're now introducing a duplicate black and white rear image that only provides light where needed, with dark pixels not even being lit at all. But the results… they're not great. While the diffusion sheet makes for nice even illumination, it doesn't actually blur the projected image. This is only problematic because it's so difficult to get the projector lined up perfectly with the LCD's image, creating all sorts of weird artefacts like ghosting around misaligned text and graphics. There's even a parallax effect going on due to the physical distance between the LCD layer and the diffusion sheet. Defocusing the projector doesn't help either, because it just makes a drop shadow around everything. Hmm. I guess it was a bit optimistic of me to assume that this would work straight off the bat, but the thing is, the solution is so cool that it blew my mind when I saw it in action. And it's to simply do some image processing to the projected image first, using, of all things, OBS. For those who don't know, OBS is a free streaming app that has some incredibly powerful features, one of which is the ability to apply screen effects to a captured display. One such effect is the Luma Key filter, which can make everything but the darkest areas of the image completely white, essentially giving us a luminance map that only tapers areas that need complete, or close to complete, darkness. The real magic, though, lies in the Glow Filter add-on. It can softly expand the reach of the luminance map outwards, making alignment less critical and ensuring that every pixel that requires light receives it in full. This is a significant change, and as you can see, we have a very convincing looking light map that should hopefully fix all of the problems we've been having. So, let's test it out. Guys, we've done it. The luminance map was the key to making this entire idea work, and I cannot believe what I'm seeing. No way! That genuinely looks like an OLED. Wow. That's crazy, dude. It did genuinely evoke an emotional response. 
Seeing an old, dated LCD TV working in conjunction with an almost two decade old office projector to create such a beautiful image was a moment. What makes it so good is simply the accuracy of how light is applied as a backlight for the panel. It tightly follows the rims of objects and points of light, thanks entirely to the projector's resolution. Because of this accuracy, blooming becomes essentially invisible, and the micro contrast that deep blackness capability adds to even scenes that require only a few dark patches gives it a real OLED-like appearance. That said, it's never going to be anywhere near as bright or as colour accurate as an OLED TV, but that it can even be compared to one is wild, especially taking into account that it can be built for free using entirely recycled parts. Just look at how it compares to a TV that uses LED-based local dimming. Yes, again, it can't go as bright, but when you're watching a movie in the evening, honestly, which one would you prefer? Speaking technically, the Project TV's image is just objectively better when it comes to black level control. Just look at how well blooming is managed around this cursor. And even tests like this dot test show actual darkness between them, because the resolution of the backlight is high enough to provide illumination where required, tracking each point of light. Performing an A-B comparison, switching the pixel dimming on and off, is a good way of seeing just what effect this backlight control has, taking the LCD panel from washed out to vibrant in an instant. The only challenge left now is making it usable in a normal living room, because let's face it, having to have your TV two meters away from a wall to make room for the projector isn't very practical. Now, the easiest solution for this would be to go with a short throw projector, which could literally just sit directly behind the TV, lighting it up in a very compact fashion. But using the long throw variety of projector like the one I have is still possible if we fold the light path using mirrors. You see, by mounting a small mirror to the ceiling, it allows the projector to be wall mounted as the mirror will bounce the light back down towards the floor. This means that by adding some brackets to the TV's stand, we can add another mirror behind it at a 45 degree angle. When this is moved into position and lined up, it'll receive light from the projector, despite being significantly closer to the wall. Admittedly, it's not super elegant, so I'm going to keep my eyes open for a short throw projector to upgrade to, but this is a good solution for using long throw projectors, making the project more accessible than ever. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this modern take on a rear projection TV. Honestly, those old rear projection TVs were so close to actually being very good, and it turns out all they needed to do was add an LCD panel. Still, this has been a great upcycling project, and if you'd like to try building one for yourself, I've actually started a thread on the DIY Perks forum, which you can find linked to in the description, where you guys can discuss where to take this idea next, because there's actually still loads of potential. I mean, the projectors are so cheap, imagine using multiple of them to achieve even higher brightness or modding the light source within them to be an LED and get really high color gamut. Honestly, there are so many ideas and I'm sure I'll keep experimenting as well, uh, but you could also discuss it on the DRI Perks Discord server if you'd prefer. But other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DRI Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.